Hi guys, Vincent here, and this is the Hirschfinger 71. The Hirschfinger 71 is a sword style bayonet with a steel blade and handle. The two grip pieces are made out of pressed leather. I don't have a sheath to go along with this, but it would be a leather sheath with a steel top and bottom part. The Hirschfinger was designed to be the bayonet for the Jägerbüchse M1871. Both the Jägerbüchse as well as the Hirschfinger were special weapons of the elite light infantry, the Jägers, since the mid 1700s. If you translate the word Hirschfinger into the English language, you would get something like deer catcher. In the old civilian world, these hunting daggers would be used to kill wounded game. And since the Jägers have the history deeply rooted within the hunting traditions, some of these civilian terms would be used in the military context of the Prussian Jäger Corps. And by the way, the word Jäger literally means hunter in German. So whenever the word Hirschfänger is used in a military context, 99% of the time it is describing a bayonet or Seitengewehr for the Jägers or other light infantry. And now with the confusion about the term Hirschfänger out of the way, we can take a closer look at our Hirschfänger 71. And please note, since the Hirschfänger 65, 65-71 and the Hirschfänger 71 are nearly identical, all of the following measurements are going to count for all three of them. The overall length of the Hirschfänger is 640 mm. The blade itself is 520 mm long and at the widest part of the blade it measures 28 mm. Near the handle the blade is an impressive 9.5 mm thick. Without the sheath the Hirschfänger weighs roughly 675 grams. And now let's start with the history of the three Hirschfänger. In 1865, right before the Austrian-Prussian War of 1866, the Prussian Jäger Corps got new weapons. These would serve them right through the already mentioned War of 1866 and the famous Franco-Prussian War of 1870-1871. In the good old Jäger traditions, the new rifle was named the Needlefire Jägerbüchse M65. This rifle used the needle firing mechanism developed by Nicolas von Dreisel and featured a double set trigger for even more accuracy. Together with the new rifle came the Hirschfänger M65 and as you can see it looks identical to the Hirschfänger 71 you already saw here in the video. In 1868 every Prussian Jäger battalion was equipped with a new rifle and bayonet ready for the Franco-Prussian War. In 1870, Prussia and its allies started with 19 battalions of light infantry, two guard battalions, 15 regular Jäger battalions and two Royal Bavarian Jäger battalions. It was only during the First World War when Jäger units got bigger and the first Jäger regiments were founded. After the victory in 1871, the German Empire was formed and the King of Prussia, Wilhelm I, was crowned as the new Kaiser of Germany. The military quickly realized that the armed forces of the then new German Empire would need a new, more modern weapon. After adopting the Mauser infantry rifle M71 for the line infantry regiments, the Jäger got their special rifle a few years later, and they called it the Jägerbüchse M71. Even though the rifle was new, the bayonet would stay the same. A small change with the muzzle ring diameter would transform the Hirschfänger 65 into the Hirschfänger 71. The Jägerbüchse and Hirschfänger 71 were liked by the troops. So much in fact that it was not only the Jäger Corps who got equipped with these weapons, but also the Imperial Navy. In 1876, most of the Navy land units replaced their needle rifles, revolvers, cutlasses and other close combat weapons with a combination of the Jägerbüchse and Hirschfänger 71. The Hirschfänger 71 remained the standard bayonet for the Imperial Navy for the next 25 years, even though some units adopted the Infanteriegewehr 71-84, they mostly kept the Hirschfänger 
since it could also be used with the 7184. There are some bayonets 7184 marked to the Imperial Navy, but they are rare and most of the Navy pictures show the man with mounted Hirschfängers and not the short 7184 bayonet. One really interesting document I found was this inventory list from 1904. This was four or five years after the Navy officially adopted the Gewehr and Seitengewehr 98 as their new weaponry. This document shows how many weapons and what type of weapons were used by which Navy units in this particular year. I marked the Hirschfänger 71 with this red rectangle and in total they still used roughly 21,000 Hirschfängers in 1904. This really shows how important the Hirschfänger was to the Imperial Navy. This and many other documents like it can be found in the outstanding book Die Handwaffen der Königlich Preußischen und der Kaiserlichen Marine, written by Hans Reckendorf. I have never recommended a book to you guys, but if you're interested in rifles, bayonets and swords of the Imperial and Prussian Navy, this is the book you need to get. Sadly, it's not printed anymore and it's only available in German, but again, it's the best source about this topic, and since bayonets and swords from the Navy or colonial troops is one of my main field of interest, this was a really good investment for me, and that's why I want to share this with you. But enough with the Navy, let's get back to our Jäger battalions. Sadly, I don't have any production numbers when it comes to the Hirschfänger 71, but what I can do is research the number of men you need to equip with the Hirschfänger 71 in every Jäger battalion, including the Reserve Battalion, Ersatz Company, and so on. We can then multiply this number with 19, since there are 19 Jäger battalions, and then we have some kind of minimum number of Hirschfängers that would have existed in the early 1880s. According to Rüdiger Franz's book Preußisch Deutsche Seitengewehre, Volume 3, on page 213, one Jäger battalion, including the reserve battalion and everything else, needed 2,362 Hirschfänger. Multiply this by 19 and now we have a minimum of 44,878 Hirschfängers in the Jäger Corps. In the mid-1880s there was a short break for the Hirschfänger 71 when it comes to the Jäger battalions. Unlike the Imperial Navy, every Jäger battalion had to give up the Jägerbüchse and Hirschfänger 71 and change them against the rifle and bayonet 7184, as you can see here with this bayonet marked to the 13th Jäger Battalion. But this would only last for a few years, since in the early 1890s, when the Jägers adapted the Gewehr 88, they finally got the Hirschfänger 71 back. The Gewehr 88 and Hirschfänger 71 would remain the weaponry for the Jägers until they got the rifle and Seitengewehr 98. With these new and modern weapons, the time finally ended when the Jägers had a different weapon than the regular infantry. So much for the history. Before we take a closer look at the stamps and markings, I want to clarify the difference between the three Hirschfänger we already talked about. Basically, all three Hirschfänger are the same bayonet. The 65 was introduced together with the Jägerbüchse M65, and then after the Jäger adopted the Jägerbüchse M71, which had a slightly smaller barrel, the Hirschfänger M65 was altered to fit the smaller barrel. This was done by inserting a small metal ring with an outer diameter of 22mm and an inner diameter of 17.4mm. These rings were then welded into place, making the Hirschfänger 65 fit the Jägerbüchse M71. These adapted Hirschfängers were then called Hirschfänger 65-71. Hirschfänger bayonets, who were produced after the Jägerbüchse M71 was issued to the Jägers, were of course directly built with a smaller muzzle ring diameter to fit the new rifle, and they were called Hirschfänger M71. The other thing that changed was the number of rivets holding the leather grip pieces. In roughly 1869 they switched from 3 to 5, which means that they are Hirschfänger 65 and 65 71s with three or five rivets, while the 71s only have five all the time. I hope this makes everything clearer to you and more understandable. Oh, and yeah, by the way, the Hirschfänger 65-71 I showed you here had its grip changed from leather to horn. This was most likely done after it was sold off and someone wanted to make the bayonet look more like a hunting piece while wearing it as a dress bayonet. 
underlining the hunting traditions within the Jäger Corps. Alright, now let's have a closer look at the stamps and markings we can expect on a Hirschfänger 65, 6571 or 71. As always we start with the manufacturer markings. This piece here has two. One of them, in this case Clemen and Jung in Solingen, shows us where the blade was made and the other one, here Erfurt, indicates where the blade and the handle were assembled. The proof marks are at the pommel and there are two times the letter S beneath a crown. Now when talking about the Hirschfänger 65 and 6571 you will find the property stamp on one of the sides of the blade as well as on top of the handguard. This changed later and the Hirschfänger 71s will have their property stamp as we all know it at the back of the blade. The property stamp is always made out of two letters and two digits. The two letters indicating the regent, the king or emperor and the two digits indicate the year when this piece got officially state property. And since we have a Navy Hirschfänger M71 here, there's also an Imperial Navy property stamp. The KM markings just shows that this is Navy property. They are not the unit markings. The unit markings are on the other side of the handguard. And in our case, they are showing that this piece was issued to the 1st Matrosendivision or 1st Sailor Division. All of the Navy markings were crossed out when this bayonet was sold off. And this is it guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you have any questions or comments regarding Prussian or Imperial German bayonets, feel free to post them in the comments or send me a mail. If you think I have earned it, please leave a like or subscribe. The sources are, as always, at the end of the video. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but I will see you guys in the next video. Music